We turn now to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Senator, good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. Senator, what's your response to the latest strikes in the Golan Heights? Well, look, first, we know that Iran, through its surrogates, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, is really the real evil in this area. Um, and uh, Israel has every right to defend itself against Hezbollah like they do against Hamas. Uh, it's sort of, it shows you how bad Iran and its surrogates are. These were Arab kids they shot at. They don't care. They sent missiles at, and they don't even care uh, who that is. Um, but having said that, uh, I don't think uh, anyone wants a wider war, so I hope there are moves to de-escalate. Sticking with the Middle East, Senator, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, just in Washington, uh, you were part of the formal bipartisan invitation to have him come to Washington. Yet there was video of you not shaking his hand when he was on the floor on Capitol Hill. Why not? Why did you not shake his hand? Well, look, you know, I went to this speech um, because the relationship between Israel and uh, America is ironclad, and I wanted to show that. But at the same time, as everyone knows, I have serious disagreements with the way uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has conducted these policies. Your colleague and friend, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, tweeted this this week. She said, Benjamin Netanyahu's presentation in the House chamber was by far the worst presentation of any foreign dignitary invited and honored with that privilege in American history. Do you agree with her assessment? And do you have any regrets at all about look, the invitation? Look, no, as I've said, I wanted to show our ironclad commitment to Israel that transcends any one prime minister or any one president, uh, no matter how much you might disagree with that prime minister. Uh, Senator, on July 13th, you went to Delaware to meet with President Biden. It was a private discussion, and I know you like to keep your discussions with the president private, but that, for history, was a very momentous meeting in the sense of you were the Senate Democratic leader, the majority leader, meeting with the president to discuss the presidential race. For history, for the record, did you in any way suggest to the president that he should leave the presidential race on July 13th? Well, first, let's look at President uh, Biden's record. He's had one of the most amazing presidencies we've had in decades, passing so many good things. The infrastructure bill, the IRA bill, getting the price of prescription drugs down for the first time, uh, going against uh, the NRA successfully, helping our veterans with burn pits. So he's had an amazingly successful record. Uh, and he's always done what's right for America. And I respect him. I respect his patriotism. I respect uh, the amazing things he's done. We work together on many of them. But just for history, though, did you, what was your role, what was your intention with that meeting with him on July 13th? Because some Biden allies, feel heard about this entire process. I just sat down the other day with Senator Chris Croons, your colleague, and he said a lot of people feel hurt, angry about how this all played out. And you did go to see him and conveyed the views of your colleagues based on our reporting. So what exactly happened there? What was your role, if any, in suggesting he, he get out well, or look, stay in? As I said, yeah, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but he can the pre President Biden will walk away from the presidency with his head held high because of all the great things he's done and uh, because he put America first. He always has. Vice President Harris, now the presumptive nominee. Senator, are you encouraging Senate Democrats, including those in battleground states, to invite her to campaign with them, to have her in their advertisements? Yeah, the Biden-Harris record is just incredible, as I mentioned. All the specific things uh, that has been that they have passed together working with us. So it's an incredible record, and our senators are already talking about it. They're, you know, cutting ribbons at new bridges. They're bringing rural broadband. Uh, they're bringing broadband to rural areas. Um, they're opening up new factories from chip fabs. So it's a great, great record, and it's helping our Senate candidates run on it. And let me just say one thing. Just compare that to the Republican record, to the Trump-Vance uh, ticket. It's extreme. This Project 2025 shows it would take the rights away from women. It would take away rights 
of um, uh, working people and help only the very wealthy. It would even be a threat to our democracy. And one more point about this, and that is uh, the addition of J.D. Vance uh, to this ticket. It's, it's incredibly uh, bad choice. Um, I think uh, Donald Trump, I know him, and he's probably sitting and watching the TV. And every day, uh, Vance, it comes out, Vance has done something more extreme, more weird, more erratic. Uh, Vance seems to be more erratic and more extreme than President Trump. And I'll bet President Trump is sitting there scratching his head and wondering, why did I pick this guy? Uh, the choice may be one of the best things he ever did for Democrats. What do you mean? Now, the president has about 10 days, 10 days before uh, the Ohio um, ballot is locked in, and he has a choice. Does he keep Vance on the ticket, uh, where uh, he's, he probably, he's, he already has a whole lot of baggage, he's probably going to be more baggage over the weeks because we'll hear more things about him, or does he pick someone new? It's his choice. So Democrats focusing on Senator Vance, your colleague in the chamber. But Republicans seem to be focusing a lot on border policy and Vice President Harris. What's your suggestion about how she should handle that? Republicans are saying she has fumbled the ball uh, on immigration, on border policy. What's the answer for how to define her on, herself on that issue? It's going to be brought up again and again the, on the answer, in this campaign. The answer is very simple. And that is that Democrats, along with the Biden-Harris administration, put together the toughest border policy that would have stopped the flow from the border uh, that we've seen in a very long time. In fact, initially was supported by Republicans. So many of the leading Republicans said, this is tough, we're all for it. And then all of a sudden, President Trump says it. He said it explicitly. He said, I don't want them to solve the problem. I want chaos at the border so I can uh, w run on it with the election. We're happy to bring that up. And in case after case, when we bring that up, the voters side with us, not with their policies. We were willing to fix the border. Trump and his Republican minions said, don't fix it. We want chaos for <clears throat> political purposes. Who do you think is going to win the argument? Has Vice President Harris reached out to you about her vice presidential selection? And do you have a leading contender or two that you believe would be helpful? And Senator Kelly, your colleague, is one of the contenders We've reported. Uh, are you confident that if he goes on the ticket, you can hold on to that seat in a few years in a special? Well, let me say this. I have complete confidence that Vice President Harris will choose a top-notch ticket uh, and a top-notch vice presidential candidate. We have a lot of, we have a very strong bench. There are a lot of good choices. I have confidence in her choice. Are you worried about the Senate majority? It's a narrow majority for you right now. What's your candid assessment about the Senate majority and Democratic chances? My candid assessment is we're going to not only win the Senate, but we have a good chance to pick up a seat or two. Our candidates, our senators are running on their records of accomplishment, and that's why they're running ahead of even the national ticket, um, because when they show all the good stuff we're bringing to their states through the infrastructure bill, through the Chips and Science Bill with so many good new manufacturing jobs, uh, through bringing broadband to rural areas for the first time, um, where rural areas desperately need it. You know, Franklin Roosevelt said in the 1930s electricity was a necessity and brought it to them. We're doing the same thing with broadband, which in the 21st century is a necessity. Speaking and about so technology, we, what we about... We have a great record to run <clears throat> on, and it's going yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna to keep us, it's gonna keep us uh, uh, in, in the majority. Staying with technology for a second, you've raised national security concerns about TikTok. Do you support the Harris campaign using TikTok to promote its candid her candidacy? Look, I'm not going to get into the details of how to run the campaign. I'm talking about the message that they have, and they should bring it forward in whatever way they can. Uh, we did vote uh, to eliminate TikTok, and uh, in a period of less than a year, uh, that legislation will go into effect. And Finally here, Senator, President Biden this week is going to make a push on the Supreme Court to reform the Supreme Court. What's really possible there? What's realistic? Give us your real view about whether this can happen this year on a, in a bipartisan yes. way. Well, first, let's start off. The Supreme Court is a morass. First, it's an ethical morass. The idea that wealthy individuals, many of them right wing, can both have pay for cases before the court and at the same time give justices gifts or trips is outrageous. 
and frankly, Chief Justice Roberts isn't doing enough to curb it. But it's a morass in even a worse way. This is a MAGA right-wing court. It's already taken the right, uh, away the right to choose. It could very well go further on that. I fear it will. Uh, it's siding with the wealthiest of individuals and the powerful interests over the average um, uh, working family. Uh, and it even th threatens democracy when it says that a president can uh, uh, get immunity even for certain um, acts in the presidency. So this court is, is just a morass, both ethically and substantively. And I think we will look at uh, all the various proposals um, and see what should be done. And just quickly here, Senator, a lot's on the horizon for you. You have a possible shutdown this fall, the debt limit later this year. Are you engaged or prepared to engage with Speaker Johnson in the House to address these serious issues? Well, we are prepared to engage. You have to do these things in a bipartisan way. And we keep reminding uh, Speaker Johnson that the right-wing MAGA group in his, in, in his party, which wanted default, which wants to shut down the government, is so ideologically fixated on these things that they would hurt tens of millions of American families. And uh, sometimes Speaker Johnson sides with them. Sometimes he doesn't. He sides with them too much. A lot on your plate. Thank you, Senator Schumer. We appreciate your time. Yes. And Face the Nation, we'll be back in one minute. Stay with us.